Okay, in this video, I'm going to explain the concept of molar mass, um, which we're going to be using a lot this year. So we want to make sure that it really makes sense to you. Sorry, this is a little shaky. I'm going to try and fix that. Okay, so before we talk about molar mass, we need to review what a mole is. So remember, a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. It's a number we used to count with. So we took notes last time, we wrote down that number, and we could count anything with 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We could count pencils and say in one mole of pencils there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pencils. But we like to count atoms and molecules with this big number because they're so small. Um, now, we use moles a lot in chemistry. We use moles to measure out like amounts of chemicals when we do reactions, but you can probably imagine that we don't like, it's impossible for us to actually like count out that number of molecules. You can't just like grab molecules with some tiny little molecular tweezer and like count them out. There's no such thing. They're too small to just count. So we count them by weight using something called molar mass. Um, and this is not as uncommon as it might seem. There are lots of things that we count by weight. Let's say you go buy a box that says it has a thousand paper clips in it. They probably didn't actually count out a thousand paper clips. They probably just figured out how much a thousand paper clips weighs, and then they just weighed out a thousand paper clips. All right. So different elements on the periodic table um, have different weights. So if I had a mole of hydrogen, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms, that would be a lot lighter than if I had a mole of, say, iron, because iron is heavier, it's got 26 protons, hydrogen only has one, okay? So each element on the periodic table has its own individual um, atomic mass, average atomic mass, it also has its own individual molar mass, which is the mass of one mole of that element. So, conveniently, it turns out that one mole of hydrogen is 1.008 grams. In fact, that's how we defined the mole. We wanted the mole to equal this number on the periodic table. Um, so a mole of lithium is 6.94 grams. A mole of beryllium is 9.01 grams. So if you want to know the mass of one mole of any element, you just find it on the periodic table. Okay, so let's write down some definitions now. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of an element or compound. And the molar mass can be found underneath the element symbol on the periodic table. Okay, so let's do some examples. If I want to find the molar mass of, say, hydrogen, again, to just find hydrogen, the number underneath it is 1.008. Now, the way we write molar mass is really important. So we always write the number, and then that's the number of grams of hydrogen. And then we're going to use molar mass as a conversion factor. So we're going to write it as a fraction. The molar mass is the mass of one mole. So underneath here, I'm going to write one mole of H. So what this is saying, is one mole of H is 1.008 grams, okay? So we're always gonna write it like that. Let's do PB. PB is lead, it's number 82 right here. It's molar mass is 207.2 grams. Okay, so this is really easy, right? All you have to do is look on the periodic table and then write grams per mole. Now you wanna make sure the number on the periodic table is the grams. Sometimes people get it confused and they'll write like 207.2 moles of PB per one gram, but that wouldn't make sense, right? One mole is equal to this many grams. So it's always one mole with molar mass every single time. Let's find AU. AU is actually gold. The Latin word for gold is arum, which starts with AU. Uh, its molar mass is 197. Sorry, my video just cut off there. So the molar mass of AU is 197.0 grams of AU per one mole of AU. Okay, now let's do some compounds. 
So, to find the molar mass of NaCl, it's really easy. I just add up uh, the molar mass of Na and the molar mass of Cl. So, looking at the periodic table, Na is 22.99, Cl is 35.45. And I'm not going to show you me calculating this because I think you guys can use a calculator. You end up with 58.44 grams of NaCl over one mole of NaCl. Okay, now this one's a little bit different. It's got this little two right here. That's called a subscript, and it means there's two calciums. So I need to add, or sorry, two chlorines, not two calciums, two chlorines. So I need to add one calcium and two chlorines. So calcium is 40.08. We looked up chlorine for the other problem. So we can do 40.08. Now I could add chlorine twice, or I can just do two times the molar mass of chlorine, because that's the same as adding it twice. Uh, on your calculator, what I would do, if I were you, is multiply these two numbers together, write the number that you get up here, and then add that number to 40.08, just to make sure uh, it ends up right. You should get 110.98 grams of CaCl2 over one mole of CaCl2. Now, I would pause the video and make sure you get that same number when you calculate it. Make sure you're doing your calculator stuff correctly. Um, also notice I'm being very careful to write grams and moles and the symbol for the compound. It's really important that you do all of this. Um, it will really help you keep track of what you're doing in different problems that we do. Okay, now this one is even more interesting. This one has parentheses with a little three outside of them. So in math, if you have a number outside of parentheses, you distribute that number to everything inside the parentheses it's the same with subscripts. So this little three subscript gets distributed to and multiplied by the subscripts inside the parentheses. So let's go through and count how many of each of these elements I have. So the three doesn't affect this Fe, which is iron. So there's just one. Now the three got distributed to the N. So there's now three Ns. And then the three, oh, there's the bell. The three here, outside the parentheses, multiplies by this three, which gives me nine oxygens. So, to add this up, I find the molar mass of iron, which is 55.85. We have a special request, and we'd like to dedicate this to all the monsters out there. So, it's Halloween, and they're playing a song over the intercom, but we're going to keep going. Three times N... And then nine times oxygen. So you get 241.88 grams of FeNO3 3 over one mole of FeNO3 3. Okay, I guess I'll have to finish this video when they finish playing their song. All right, so I found a room where the song isn't as loud, so hopefully you can't hear it too loudly. Um, okay, so we're going to show you how to use the molar mass to solve a problem. So how to use it as a conversion factor. So this problem says I have two moles of H2O. How many grams is this? So the first thing we need to do is find the molar mass of H2O. So that two means there's two H's. So we're going to do two times the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008 plus just one oxygen. So the molar mass of H2O is gonna be 18.016 grams of H2O per one mole of H2O. Okay, now to solve the problem, we never wanna start with the molar mass. We can use it as a conversion factor because it's got two units, a unit on the top and a unit on the bottom. You always wanna start with the other part of the problem. So start with two moles of H2O I'm trying to get to grams, so I want to cross out moles and get to grams. So that means I want to put the 18.016 grams on the top and one mole of H2O on the bottom. Moles will cross out and I'll end up with 36.032 grams of H2O. And that's it. That's how you use molar mass as a conversion factor. So let's do one more. 
um, Lucy is doing her laundry and accidentally spills 1.6 grams of bleach on her red shirt. How many moles did she spill? So, we would set up this problem like this. We've got 1.6 grams of NaClO and then we are going to need to use the molar mass to solve this problem. So let's kind of just over here, I'm going to find the molar mass. So Na, if you look it up on the periodic table, is of course 22.99 plus Cl is 35.45 plus O is 16. And when you add that all up, you end up with 74.44 grams of NaClO is one mole of NaClO. Now this time, I want grams to be on the bottom so I can cross out my grams that were on the top. So it's gonna look like this. And grams cross out. Then you multiply across the top. So on the top, I'm gonna get 1.6 moles of NaClO. And then on the bottom, I've just got the 74.44. Then you need to divide that, you need to grab a calculator. And when you divide that, you end up with 0 0.021 moles of NaClO. All right, so it was a really brief uh, introduction to molar mass, how to find it. How to use it as a conversion factor. So hopefully that made sense. Let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm happy to answer them.